Hello, and today we're going to be talking about Athena. It's been around since 2013, and many people have been giving me the source code to it. There's recently been a leak. I don't really know who's to blame or what's happened, but basically, it's time for me to review this. Now, there's been three owners, basically, that have had this. There's been Stoner, the original developer. There has been Understalker, and there's also been Nex. Now, Nex is trying to sell it, I assume, because it's been leaked. I'm not really sure about the situation, all I know is that I currently have the source code to some version of the Athena HTTP. So for those of you not proficient in C++, this is the start of the program, and as you can see, it's saying is running in Sandbox. So in this method, we're basically checking whether um, sandboxes are running by using various methods such as checking DOLs, and basically, um, it's so that automated malware analysis can't happen. Um, they did comment out though this uh, check that would normally help them in the other side of research which is debuggers. I'm not too sure why they got rid of that but whatever. Okay then back to main and basically we've got another method here called dynamic load libraries and what this will do is dynamic load libraries. It's going to load kernel 32 amongst other libraries so that it can load functions that would basically be associated as malicious activity and the reason for this is if APIs are essentially loaded straight away in a program some antiviruses might be discriminant over this. Now what we're going to do is we're going to look at define initial variables. Within define initial variables we have adjust privileges. Now this picture may look a little bit daunting I get that I really do but the basics of it is that we're asking for SE debug name privileges so that we can look at other applications and um, sort of adjust them in certain ways that normally you couldn't do without this sort of privileged token. Also I thought I'd include the Windows API down the bottom there just so you guys could enjoy that. I don't know if that's actually helpful or not but I guess you've got that as well. So after we've done adjusting the tokens what we're going to want to do next is we're going to be defining some environment variables which we have in this picture as well as that we also want to set the operating system. We want to understand what operating system we have because you know anything under Windows XP just sucks. For malware purposes obviously everyone calm down. Also we define different browsers although I don't really know what Maxon is doing there. I didn't even know what it was until I actually had to search it up. Did anyone know what that was? Because I didn't so I mean I, I count myself as someone that sort of looks at technology quite a lot so if, if I'm out of the game here, I'm a little bit worried because someone, seriously, someone comment, really, about if they know that or not. Next, we have to, of course, check if we're administrator or not because, obviously, you can do a lot more with administration rights. As well as that, we're also going to check where we want to save various things under app data or wherever XP is. So, that as well. We also have a load of different process names that we could use. Um, dependent on various factors, which you can check if you ever get the source, but here are the names of the processes that are used. The one that got me was Adobe, I didn't really think that was going to be a thing, but apparently that's what they went for. So now we're out of define variable and back to main, and this is really um, a commented out piece of code, and I don't really understand why they keep their commented out code. Either get rid of it or do something with it, please. But anyway, uh, so this checks with Find Window X, uh, the task manager. If it's available, if it's not, then we don't do anything. Yay. Um, but if it's available, then we try and read and write process memory, which really comes to my point that I think maybe they've commented it out because customers have complained that antivirus are detecting it. I can't imagine antivirus is finding it okay that you read and write process memory to task manager. But hey, that's just me. And also one of antivirus's techniques is signature detection. So I mean, I don't really have, I'm not sure why it's commented out. We also have this antivirus killing script, which is kind of weird because it's simply a vast, um, you know, killing a process as well as looking into a directory isn't exactly the best, but there you go. And of course now we're going to sleep because at random points a antivirus will check on a file or process rather. And so we're just going to sleep for a little bit which is cool I guess. So I guess you guys are getting sort of bored of me making witty remarks to malware. But don't worry it gets better. It gets a little bit more technical. Right now we have the uh, install persistence. And what that is basically is every piece of malware needs a little bit of persistence to make sure that technical guys get a little bit done over when it comes down to removing malware. 
Now, when I mean technical, guys, I don't mean the people that analyze malware. I mean people that control networks. Now, not everyone's proficient in analyzing and identifying malware, but some malware th falls through the net of antiviruses, and so sometimes people have problems. And so the malware can sort of capitalize on this by making various ways of being persistent in the system. So first of all, in this install and persist function, what we need to do is uninstall the files and keys to make sure that we can create them again so that it's persistent every once in a little while. Remember, this is on a loop and it sleeps every little while. So we need to uninstall and then redo everything that we just did. So after we've uninstalled some keys, what we need to do now is put some keys in. And these are some of the values that are used within the bot. Some of them are fairly interesting, some of them aren't. It's dependent on if they are admin, where it goes to current user or local machine. But overall, nothing out of the ordinary. And so, yeah, look at this. This is the values of some of the bot, I guess. Now, as we've entered all the registry keys, now we need to create the directory and hide the file and the, hide the directory. And this is what it's done. It's quite common in malware to do this. Quite easy to um, unhide the file. But for someone that doesn't really understand malware, this is a really good way of keeping your malware away from people that could possibly find it. Now, this is kind of awkward because I've already sort of talked about this, but if you're administrator, you basically have um, the local machine. If you're not, then use current user. It's kind of... I should have really planned that, really, but, you know, I, I feel like I hadn't talked about it a lot, so I think I'm going to get away with it. Anyway, okay, I'm going to stop there for a moment on Athena and ask you guys whether you actually enjoy these. This is a new sort of thing that I've started, the new format of pictures and me narrating over them. So what I've done is, um, because this takes me quite a lot of time, I've stopped work here and said, hey, let's see what everyone's thinking about this. Anyway, so give me your feedback down below. That's the video for today. I apologize if you guys were expecting the whole thing today. But, you know, that part just took me a whole day. So, I, you know, I don't have unlimited amount of time. I've got a lot of other things to do as well. Um, so yeah, if you enjoyed that, give it a like, comment down below, subscribe if you're new, and tell me what you liked about this. Um, I actually quite like the format, I think it works, but you know, let's see what other people think. Um, and yeah, I'll see you in the next video.